Hi everyone. Now we are going to discuss about kefir which is one of the types of fermented milk or microbial products of milk. Kefir is a fermented milk drink that originated in North Caucasus or Caucasus mountain in Eastern Europe with kefir grains and these kefir grains are containing the two types of uh, organisms one is the bacteria examples streptococcus lactis beta bacterium cucasicum and yeast culture so these are the two one which involved in the fermentation of kefir the word kefir is derived from the Turkish word called kef which means good feeling that is a benefit of this drink is said to be provide for those who consume it. So the actual definition how we are going to define the kefir is it is a viscous self-carbonated beverage with a smooth slightly foamy body and whitish color having a very small quantity of alcohol is going to be considered or defined as a kefir. And this kefir is produced with starter grains I told you starter grains nothing but containing the microorganisms known as kefir grains so here the starter culture of the kefir are going to be called as kefir grains which contain the active microorganisms consisting of about 83 to 90 percent of lactic acid bacteria that may be any lactic acid bacteria and 10 to 17 percent of yeast so together we are going to have here is a one is lactic acid another one is a alcohol production then moving to the composition of the kefir the lactic acid is going to be of 0.9 to 1 percent alcohol content is 0.5 to 1 percent then carbon dioxide is 0.03 to 0.7 percent and the fat content is 3.5 to 3.8 and the protein is 2.5 to 3.3 percent then lactose is going to be of 3 to 4 percent and more of the quantity is 8 water is going to be of 87 to 88 percent along with this the kefir also possesses the traces amounts of acetaldehyde diacetyl estoin of the total nitrogen in the form of peptones and two percent of amino acids so along with this we are also going to have vitamins like b b2 b12 and folic acid along this we are also having the a vitamin d also but majority we are going to see the b complex or vitamin b complex in more number then moving to the starter culture or the microorganisms involved in the kefir fermentation so the bacteria this is a bottle of the starter culture you can see in the picture very clearly okay the bacteria used in kefir production is going to be lactobacillus cucasius which turns the lactose to lactic acid so this results in tangy taste so either this lactobacillus cucasius can be used or the streptococcus lactis can also be used meanwhile the yeast that is present along with it in the kefir grains that is saccharomyces kefir and torula kefir ferment the lactose into small amount of carbon dioxide and alcohol so these are the two main uh, things that we can see in this fermentation is lactic acid along with the alcohol production then commercial kefir is produced from a milk product that is heated to remove the possibly pathogenic bacteria then a mixture of bacteria and yeast is added to fermentation okay commercially they are going to do this one so this starter culture is called kefir grains which has a cauliflower like so you can see here they are going to looking like a cauliflower one okay cauliflower like appearance this what gives kefir a unique taste and texture whereas a homegrown kefir only requires grains okay then moving to the kefir grains so here you can see the in detail of the kefir grains the kefir grains are going to be of what color white or cream colored grains that look rather like cauliflower florets that ferments the milk now this kefir grain is going to have certain microflora so that can be of lactic acid bacteria example it may be a leuconostoc species lactobacillus lactis cremoris acetobacter or lactobacillus kefirnofaciens or lactobacillus kefir 
etc so any of the species can be present and depending upon that you are going to get the flower then the east east also going to have of about 10 to 17 percent and any of the thing can be present that is saccharomyces cerevisiae candida colicosa candida magnolia candida femata candida kefir and culivermyces lactis or torula kefir so any of the thing can be present any one or a mixture so this is the flora that is present in this kefir grain so you can see the different uh, microorganism pictures here which are involved in the kefir grain then kefirin is a term that you have to know about it so kefir is prepared from milk by inoculation with kefir grain which are going to be a composition of both the lactic acid bacteria and the yeast this is what we have learned and these microorganisms that we added are going to bind together with the casein that is a protein that is present in it and the complex sugar mainly the lactose sugar and forms a matrix of polysaccharides called as kefiran so this is what the kefiran is now this kefiran is a water soluble polysaccharide which is account for 24 percent of kefir grain so kefirin is nothing but the microorganism bind together with the casein and the complex sugar by matrix of polysaccharides is going to be called as kefirin and this is a water soluble polysaccharide and it is going to be of about 24 percent of the kefir grain and this kefirin is going to have a, a reported as a having of a antibacterial anti-tumor then anti-diabetic and immunomodulating properties as well as the technological roles as a thickener, gelling agent and emulsifier. The kefir grains are growing in size of about 5 to 7 percent of the biomass is generally separated from milk and reused. After the fermentation process, the grains are going to be recovered and can be reused. When culture ferments the milk, these structures grow, creating the new grains in the process of kefir fermentation. The, according to the modern kefir cultures, have reduced the yeast fermentation, resulting in the less carbon dioxide production, ethanol and the foam. Okay, that means they are allowing the more percentage of the carbon, uh, that is lactic acid, rather than the ethanol. Then moving to the process of kefir, which is very important in this one. So as usual, we have discussed the different types of the uh, process of uh, Bulgarian milk uh, in the another video and the general process of uh, fermented milk process also in another video. You can go through it for the complete understanding of this topic. Then coming to the process of kefir, so obviously we have to select the milk, that is the first step, that is mainly raw milk, which is containing of about 3 to 4 percent fat and 8 to 9 percent of uh, SNF, that is natural fat, solid natural fat. And this, it have to be filtered to remove the dirt, all the things, then it have to be preheated such that to remove the pathogenic microorganisms at 50 to 60 degrees centigrade. Then we have to standardize. So this all the things comes as a standardized and then homogenization to make all the molecules to evenly distribute throughout the thing. Now you have to heat treat that is pasteurization step is going to enter. It may be of 80 to 85 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes or 90 to 95 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes. So then boil uh, that means we have to boil the milk that is nothing but the pasteurization and put it in the bottles vessels or the fermenters if it is in the industrial purpose which has been thoroughly clean and rinsed with hot water so those vessels have to be thoroughly clean and rinsed with the hot water and here we have to remember that while you are uh, pouring this milk in the bottles, concern bottles where the fermentation have to undergo, there uh, we have to fill only up to the three-fourth. We should not fill completely. Okay, then you have to allow them to cool down to 20 degrees centigrade and we are supposed to add kefir granules. So kefir granules are going to be added to our milk either to the fermenter or to the bottles that we have taken. And then uh, these kefir granules are going to be of ready available in the market. 
so if it is a fresh culture at home we can use it directly but if you are bringing from the market then you have to soak it in the water to each half liter of the milk bottle okay uh, that means one spoon for example if you are taking one bottle you have to add one spoon of the kefir grains now you you have to cover the vessel that you have taken loosely so that the gas produced can escape from the bottle and now you can use this uh, whatever the kefir instead of the soaker grains that's what i told you so directly if you're having the kefir at the home you can directly use it otherwise you're supposed to bring it from the market and soak it in the water and then you are supposed to use as a kefir culture starter culture then you have to allow it for the incubation for about uh, 18 to 20 hours at a temperature of 25 to 30 degrees centigrade or you can keep the bottle at 16 to 18 18 not 80 18 degrees centigrade so after 24 hours the milk will have become a little thicker so it will become a little thicker forming some froth which is going to be called as a kefir okay now we have to sieve the kefir and ready to use the kefir granules but you have to wash it with a clean water okay so which remain in the sieve to make fresh kefir again now the kefir is now ready for consumption or can be ripened for some more days to get more flour so there comes the maturation step ripening or maturation the kefir that means this kefir that we have sieved ha can be left to ripen during which further fermentation takes place and this is essential to create kefir's characteristic qualities okay pour the kefir into a well clean bottle which can be closed or a bottle with a clip fastening and do not fill more than three fourth and then uh, why we have to do that one means it can form some sort of a gas forming during ripening and we have to leave those bottles at about 15 degrees centigrade but do not store it for more than three days so we have to consume it within three days Towards the end of the ripening, what is happening means the whey separates and can be incorporated again by stirring or turning the bottle. Now the end product is very thick, creamy, frothy drink with a sour taste and smell and uh, what we call it is going to produce the carbon dioxide is also going to be produced. If the kefir is left to ripen for more than three days, the milk may curdle and the drink becomes too sour okay the temperature and the time are going to have a very crucial time in the fermentation that means ripe ripening or the maturation of this drink now once the maturation has completed these bottles can be packed if it is an industrial purpose or at home we can ready to use or we can store it in the refrigerator for few more days to consume so this is the overall process of kefir so directly fresh kefir you can use or you can allow for the maturation or ripening for still three more days and after that you can have the thing for the consumption or you can market it if you are for the industrial purpose but these have to be done consumed within the three days because more than three days if you are allowing for the maturation or ripening it is going to give two soreness which may not be liked by so many people okay so this is a process of kefir fermentation then moving to the health benefits of kefir so kefir contains nutrients minerals that are important for proper functioning of the body such as protein then vitamins that is mainly the vitamin d calcium minerals and then b2 b12 and potassium and along with that as it is a carbohydrate polysaccharide content it is also rich in the calories and kefir is going to be considered as one of the best probiotics so as a probiotic it aids in the maintenance of digestive system and prevents the growth of harmful bacteria in the intestine so thus helping in the prevention of digestive disorders and eases of lactose intolerance kefir can strengthen your teeth bones 
because of its high calcium content and lower the risk of osteoporosis. It has potent antibacterial property or antimicrobial property, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant properties and it is going to act as an immune stimulator too. And kefir also contains a chemical called tryptophan which helps you to be more relaxed and get a better night's sleep. So these are the few health benefits or beneficial aspects of kefir consumption. So this is all about the second type of uh, fermented milk or microbial product of milk that is kefir. In the coming uh, videos we will discuss about the yogurt and cheese. Thank you.